Hi, welcome to Homemade Healthy. My name is Lisa. Today we're going to be making chocolate chip cookies with almond flour. And we're also going to add some walnuts. It's going to be amazing. These cookies are easy. There's not a whole lot of different ingredients. The main ingredient is almond flour. And in a previous uh, biscuit video, I did show you this Honeyville blanched almond flour. You can get it on Amazon or at Honeyville.com. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna mix all of our dry ingredients together and then we're gonna mix our wet ingredients. Now, parchment paper is your friend when you are doing any kind of low carb cooking. So make sure you line your baking sheet with parchment paper first. We preheated the oven to 350. They're, the cookies are gonna cook about 10 to 12 minutes. Keep an eye on them. First of all, we've got two and a half cups of almond flour. To that, we're going to add a teaspoon of baking powder and a couple of turns of the sea salt and stevia. Let me talk to you a minute about stevia. This is a great sweetener because it's natural. Splendas and erythritols and all those are not natural sugars, so this is gonna be the best choice. If you're used to regular sugar, you're used to honey, you're used to Splenda, this isn't gonna taste as sweet, it's gonna be very different. So once your palate's adjusted and you're off all carbohydrates and all sweeteners, this will be delicious. So I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon of the Cal Stevia, and I use uh, like a heaping quarter teaspoon, and that's just gonna go in here on our almond flour. And I can tell you my 10 year old loves sweets and I made brownies with the Stevia and she loved them. So pallets can get adjusted. So what we're gonna do is get a fork and just mix that well together. Okay, I have a half a cup of melted butter. And I use Kerrygold because it's from grass fed cows, it's the best for you. You can get it at Trader Joe's, local grocery stores. We're also going to do vanilla. We need a full tablespoon of vanilla. Mm. And two eggs. We use cage-free eggs. And the cage free eggs are a little bit more expensive, but the benefit is worth a little extra cost. Okay, now we're just gonna beat all this together real quick. And then we're going to mix our wet, wet ingredients with our dry ingredients. And once you get the dough all mixed, you can taste it. If it's not sweet enough for you, add a little bit more stevia and, and get it to your liking. So we're just gonna mix this all together. Once we get this all incorporated, we're gonna add our walnuts, which I've chopped half a cup, and our chocolate. I use anything between a 60 and 100% dark chocolate. This is actually the 60% dark chocolate chips, and I only use like half a cup. You can add as much as you'd like. And I chop them into smaller pieces because they're so big, when you make the cookie, it's almost overwhelming. All right. Now we're gonna add our walnuts and our chocolate. And it looks just like real cookie dough, yum. Now, you can put this in the fridge and let it harden a little bit to form your cookies or you can cook them just like this. So let's take, there we go. And you can make them whatever size you like. They're gonna hold their shape pretty good. So whatever, size and shape you make them, that's what they'll bake out to be. They don't spread a lot like your average normal cookie does. But these are so fast to pull together and they're great, the kids love them. You could use this in your muffin top pan and spread them out into that and then get some whipping cream and whip it and take two of the cookies with whipped cream in the middle. Oh, delicious. 
All right, a couple more and we'll throw them in the oven. Like I said, it's gonna be 10 to 12 minutes. Keep an eye on them. You wanna take them out? Well, it depends on how you like your cookies. I like mine chewy and soft. So I take mine out when the, when the perimeter is just starting to get like light brown or tan. Oh, wonderful. If you cook them a little longer, they end up a little bit crumbly um, and not quite as good. So we're gonna put them in the oven on 350. Set the timer, 10 minutes. I'll probably check on them at eight and we'll see you when they come out. Okay, the cookies are about ready to come out of the oven. I ended up having to put them in about one more minute, so 11 minutes. It all depends on your oven. And they're ready. Oh, delicious. Ta-da. Now it's time to try these delicious cookies. I put them on a plate. They're gonna be so good. I will tell you they're the best when they first come out of the oven. You can store them in an airtight container in the refrigerator and heat them up in the toaster oven and they get their crunch back, but they will soften up as you store them. Here we go. Mm. So good. The chocolate's nice and dark. They're not overly sweet, but they're a little bit sweet. Delicious, you're gonna love these. And if you don't like nuts, don't put the nuts in them. Walnuts are just really good for you, so that's why we choose to do ours with, with nuts. Thanks again for watching. Keep your eye out for my next episode of Homemade Healthy. Have a great night.